In this episode of Let's Talk Toads, you'll learn what the future holds for nematode management. When you clone a resistance gene and you find out what its identity is, there are a couple of things that are going to be beneficial for a grower. One, the molecular markers that can be developed to aid in the breeding process to develop nematode resistant cultivars. The second is to help researchers bioengineer novel forms of resistance and that is something that we're working towards uh, quite readily right now. With this information in hand we can take things to a whole nother level in terms of trying to modify those genes in a way to make them more durable and hence increase the longevity of natural resistance. Right now we have a, a soybean checkoff funded project. Uh, it's multi-state. The idea is to work with breeders, nematologists, bioinformaticists, bring people together that have diverse experiences in terms of their science um, and expertise, bring them together in the same room and say, look, what can we do? So what we're doing is taking novel types of resistance, identify additional resistance genes other than RHG1 and RHG4, something else we can add to the toolbox. Once we have that, we can pyramid those on top of each other, make PI88788 better, okay? The nematode's adapted. Well, what if we stack on glycine soja, wild soybean QTLs for resistance? Does that impact the ability of PI88788 to do better? The answer is yes, we have evidence that it does. We're looking at these different rotations to see how these nematodes are responding to the different types of genetic resistance. We're trying to determine which types of resistance we should combine. Maybe there's some we shouldn't. When I get a farmer field population in and I say, oh, what, you have a SCN that's adapted to PI8878, I can say, great. Look what we have available to you. We have a pyramided PI8878 with glycine soja on top. You have Peking over here, and you can start rotating it. And better yet, this is how you should rotate those resistant varieties to get the best reduction in your population densities in the field. In the next five to 10 years, growers are going to have more options in terms of genetic resistance to both soybean cyst nematode and root knot nematode. Your soybean success starts here.